Good morning! Welcome to my home and Shabbat Shalom! So it's Friday morning and I'm about to start getting ready for the day, getting ready for Shabbat dinner tonight, for tonight and I'm so excited to have you here along with me. My plan for the day is to get the kids out the door for school and then I'm taking my baby to Tad Shabbat which is probably my favorite part of the week and then come home and do some cooking. I have a amazing chicken noodle soup without the soup recipe to share i have a book a new book i want to share with you guys a little bedroom update a little shabbos joy the jewish high holidays are finally over it's been a month of every single holiday one after the other so this is a nice just restful cozy shabbat and i'm so glad you're here Okay, so I am in the kitchen. The kitchen is pretty tidy and that means it's time to get cooking. And I am doing a chicken and pasta bake. Well, I guess it's not a bake because it's in the slow cooker. Um, a chicken and pasta meal in the slow cooker. I love my slow cooker and I always take it out around this time of the year in the fall and use it like throughout the winter. The next time I vlog Shabbat, I'm actually thinking of making cholent again, also in the slow cooker, because I just love it. But today I'm making a chicken and pasta dish. It is gonna be amazing and it is featuring my Tabachnik chicken broth. This is the organic one that you can get on online on Amazon so if you are looking for delicious kosher products that will really help your cooking definitely check this out I will put the link below and thank you to Tabashnik for sending me this to me so I can make this recipe for you so all you need is chicken breasts I've just not really cut them but sliced them a tad just so the flavor really soaks in a uh, thing of pasta this is fused silly but of course you can use whatever you like um, we've got sun-dried tomatoes, onion, garlic, and then mustard and mayonnaise. So it's gonna be like a creamy dish, but it's kosher, so it's not gonna have any actual dairy in it, which is awesome. This recipe is super delicious, and I get asked a lot of questions when I make recipes like this, like what are the exact quantities? I'm like, I really just eyeball it. So for example, for the mayo and mustard, I just make sure each piece of chicken is coated to really make them super juicy and flavorful. Um, and then I put in onion, garlic, and sun-dried tomato, and the secret to this is really just in the broth because it makes everything so delicious and cooks everything perfectly and then you just want to season with salt and pepper to taste so this is what it looks like in the slow cooker um, before I add in the broth and the pasta so you can see the chicken is coated in that little mixture and then I'm gonna pour in one whole container of broth what I like to do is pour a bit around the chicken then put in one package of pasta and then cover it all with the broth okay so I literally just put everything in the slow cooker cooker like could not be easier the only thing you want to make sure of is that the pasta is completely covered so I might actually just put a, a drop more of either the broth or just plain water just to make sure it's fully covered and then I'm gonna set it on high for about two two and a half hours and then I'll just check on it because it depends like how thick your chicken meat is and that kind of thing but that should be good all right let's do it so while the chicken is cooking and my baby is napping <laughs> I thought I'd come upstairs and give you a little update on our bedroom because we've been doing a little rejig a little redesign um sorry my ketuba <laughs> my ketuba is not straight come on um so basically as it is you know with parents this is sort of the last room in the house that we've focused on since we moved in about two years ago two and a half years ago um you know like the boys rooms are gorgeous the nursery is my favorite room in the house but the the primary bedroom is just it's just been last on our list so we're trying to like get to it but we also want to do it really inexpensively so the main thing we wanted was a new bed because we actually just had a headboard we've only ever had a headboard um, since even before we were married so that's it right there <laughs> it's from Macy's and I loved it it was great the reason we only ever had a headboard was because it's a lot less expensive than buying a whole bed but <laughs> we're like okay let's actually get a bed so we got this one it's from Target it was really inexpensive and Target had 10% off any single item like one item you could choose for 10% off um, so I was like let's do it let's get the bed so there it is my husband and my son built it last night um, but we realized our box spring is the wrong size so this is a normal size box spring and we need it to be half height or something because 
right now the bed like doesn't fit in the bed so like um, i was like nothing is ever easy nothing can ever just be simple and easy so now we sort of have to exchange the box rings we'll see how that goes but the bed is in i love it and i wanted to also talk to you guys about da, 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 the new book i've been reading at night which is the woman of rothschild so i thought you guys would actually find this really fascinating because if you don't know of the rothschild family they're a very very famous family and the men in the family have all done like amazing remarkable noteworthy things but what the book is about is the women of the family and how they actually were quite remarkable themselves but i would just read you the little blurb from the side and and then I'll put the link below so you can check it out. Okay, I just popped in my tripod there <laughs> so I could read. Um, in The Woman of Rothschild, Natalie Livingstone reveals the role of women in shaping the legacy of the famous Rothschild dynasty, synonymous with wealth and power. From the east end of London to the eastern seaboard of the United States, from Spitalfields to Scottish castles, from Bletchley Park to Buchenwald, and from the Vatican to Palestine, Nally Livingstone follows the extraordinary lives of the Rothschild woman from the dawn of the 19th century to the early years of the 21st. As Jews in a Christian society and women in a deeply patriarchal family, they were outsiders. So uh, if you like, um, like, what's it called, non- so if you are into nonfiction and biographies and Judaism and Jewish women, I think you're going to like this book. It's also um, just beautifully written, very interesting, entertaining, and I've actually been using it at night because I am so guilty of double screening. Like whenever I try to watch something to like tune out and relax, I always end up also being on Instagram on my phone. So what I love about actually reading at night is I can actually focus my mind. So anyways, I'm loving that book. Thank you so much to the author for sending it to me so I could share it with you guys. This fascinating story of women's empowerment and a famous Jewish family is available now. I will put all the links below in the description so you can go check it out. And here it is, the chicken noodle soup without the soup. So delicious really really tasty my kids absolutely loved it so my baby zachary tends to eat his like best meal of the day around lunchtime rather than dinner time i mean i think he's just more tired around dinner so i'm going to give him some of the chicken noodle soup no soup right now hi zachary put your hands up that's it are you excited for some lunch what do you think bud Yeah. Yeah. Huh? How's it taste? Is it yummy? Is it yummy? Corey has the chicken. It's good. Yeah. So sometimes on a Friday night, we don't all eat dinner at the same time because the kids eat a little bit early. We try to all eat at the same time, but Corey saw Zachary snacking on the chicken noodle soup and he wanted some. So we'll see if we all end up eating more later. Um, but I gotta take out the Shabbat candles, the challah. Do you love challah? Do you love the challah? Yes, he does. And the wine and get all set up for Shabbat. So let me wish you guys Shabbat Shalom. I'm gonna take out our stuff. I keep everything here, right where Alexa's hiding. Um, this one left over from last holiday. Got my candlesticks here and I'm going to wish you guys a Shabbat Shalom. Jackie, you wanna wish everyone a Shabbat Shalom? No, you want to open the end of the cover sink. That's why I've got all the baby blocks. All right, let me finish up here, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Give this video a big thumbs up if you like it. Don't forget to hit that red subscribe button. I gotta go. I'll see you next time.